Hey guys, this is Matt with Comex Gaming and welcome to another source mode tutorial. Um so today we're gonna do custom include files. Um we're going to create our own include files. You know the dot ink files that I've used sometimes. Well we're gonna make our own files today. Um before we start with that I just wanted to talk about the video I uploaded last week. Um, which is a series on SQL Lite and custom, I mean, temporary key values and other stuff because we're making the player tag plugin. But apparently, not many people are liking it because it doesn't have many views and it doesn't have any likes. So, if you guys don't want me to continue with those, just leave a comment saying, just leave it behind. Don't worry about it, we're not interested, anyways. Um, because I'm making that for you, and if, if you're not interested, then it's it's useless. Um, so let's get started with the tutorial today. Um, but yeah, please don't forget to comment and say if you want me to continue with those or not. If you do, please then more views and some likes. Um, so custom include files. Uh, custom include files are the files that we use on every in every script or plugin we make. Um, this is an include file, for example, that it's already built in. The source mod, um, the stuff that comes with source mod. So if you go to your source mod directory and scripting, you will see a folder called include that I've used before in some tutorials to. Um, see how some functions work. So as you can see, you'll find a lot of stuff in here that comes with the source mod and other stuff that you can add if you need. You have like timers, top menus, um, menus, logging, and a lot of stuff. Geolocation, blah 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 blah. These are all the stuff you need for source mod to work. So as you can see here, we have the source mod one which is the one that we are including right over there so if I open this file you're gonna see it says include and a lot of stuff yeah so these are the stuff that we use um, to to de define the info for a plugin so name, author, description, URL all that stuff is defined over here the version of course as well that I probably didn't add over there and I forgot but whatever so yes, you can see a lot of stuff is defined here, and a lot of other stuff is defined in these include files, which are included automatically when we include source mod dot ink. Um, so I made a, a custom one for this one. Um, and if I can find, here we go, reloaded utils. So this is a custom ink file I created, and it only has one function in it. So when we create functions inside, because include files, the only thing they do is just contain functions, forwards, and, and other stuff that I forgot. But it's only one more one, so it only contains those. Um, forwards is the stuff that gets called. Um, it's like an event, you know, like unplug and start. Um, let me see if here's a forward. Yes, yeah, you can see it says forward, unplug and start. As you can see, um, so and the other one is native. There we go. Um, the forward and the native gets defined in an extension. So, in the include files, you're gonna have the functions, which are the stock. As you can see here, it says stock. The natives and the forwards. The forwards and the natives are defined in an extension. Now you can make your own extensions if you want, but that's a whole different story because you have to code them in C++, pure C++. Um, if you want, you can check that out. Um, just Google uh, source one extensions. I think they have a tutorial on that. I've done an extension before, um, but it doesn't do much. So um, I don't know if I should start a series on that or not. Uh, it's kind of interesting, but yeah. So we're gonna use stock functions, right? Because we're not gonna code our own extensions. 
if you do you're going to use forward which is for the events kind of and the natives which is for the commands or the functions that are defined in the extension and this gets called get, this calls a method or a callback in the extension C++ code however if we take a look here this tag is going to call this function and we extend this function over here so this stuff this function is going to do is already defined in our include files that's why is it's a stock right um, so the first thing we want to do is well this is a comment I added sounds sorry but the first thing you want to do is say if defined and here you can put anything you want so you're saying if this is defined then just like it's like a return this is like a return statement it's going to get out of the file and say okay you cannot include me you can't include me because I've already been included before in the same file now if this is not defined then we want to define that so imagine here we have something like this include <coughs> reloaded utils and I include that twice by mistake it's going to define it right the first time we include it it's going to say is this defined nope then let's define it now the second time it's going to say is this defined yep so just return and get out of here and do not include it now we don't want to include uh, stuff twice because it's a waste of resources and we don't want that so yeah um, the next thing you want to do is add all your functions simple as that now if we take a look here the first thing what they have um, are some um, structures um, structures are like in like in C++ if you know C++ they're like classes but they're all public accessible accessible by all members um, so that's kind of how they work in source mode so if we go here as you can see it says public plugin colon my info and here it says plugin right so yeah and here we define the name the description the author the version the URL all the stuff that we're going to define now I mean assign later on in our plugin um, if we take a look at another include file um, let me see um, I don't know files or clients like clients it says enum okay so enum defines uh, a number of integers and like the first thing we do or the first variable we declare here is going to equal zero the next one is going to equal one and so on now if you assign the first one to something that is not zero like five then the next one is going to be six, seven, eight, and so on. It's going to increment, inc yeah, increment um, when it goes down. Like the next variable is going to have the value of the previous variable plus w plus one. Um, so yeah, but leave this to zero. We don't want more like that. Um, same thing happens if you assign this one to two. The next one is going to be three, and so on. So we're defining or enum this and it's gonna have this name right I hope this you understand this because it's, it's kinda confusing um, probably you're not gonna use this stuff but whatever uh, I like to explain it and here we have some more forwards and natives and public constants uh, which is declared uh, the max maximum number of clients that the server supports but whatever let's leave that behind so in my um, include file we have this function right it's add a folder to download stable now if you watch my previous tutorials you probably know that I use some a function called add file or add files to download stable now that function what it does it it takes a file and it adds it to the download stable but what if we want to add a whole folder that has a lot of files that we want to include or I mean that we want to add to the downloads table I wouldn't want to go one by one adding it 
we'll just call this function, we we'll put the, the path in here, and I've added a variable for precache and the type. So as you can see up here, I have this thing that looks like a comment, but it's not. It's it's like a I forgot the name. Um, sorry. Well, it's where you define or where you explain what your function will do. Now, if you were using a real IDE and not this, then you would get the stuff that the function does. It it would print a message. Uh, if you use Eclipse for Java, um, you know how this works. Like when you type the function, it has the autocomplete, and the message or a dialog pops up next to it, saying all the stuff in here. So the description is: it adds a file, uh, it ad adds the files in the desired folder to the downloads table. Then has a note that it says never add the last forward slash to the path right and precache only if all the files in the directory are the same type um then we have a parameter which is a path as you can see and then i forgot to add the other two parameters right that they're optional um because as you can see it has a default value which is false and in this case it's unassigned as you can see here i define a variable and i leave it blank or with no size because we want to take the size later on when they put it in there so yeah and then we have a return which is going to return true and success and false on fail um, so if you take a look at this function it's going to do everything but with the parameters it takes so um, well this is not important I mean you can copy the code if you want I don't care uh, it's going to be useful I use it a lot so yeah but if we go in here, we can do stuff like public, oops, unplug and start, and add full folder to downloads table. As you can see, I get no dialogs here because this is a custom include file, um, a custom include folder, which is in a, in a custom include file. So the pop-up menu with the auto complete stuff does not work for this one. Now if you were using Pawn Studio it would work but I'm not. I'm using Notepad++. So if we go back here and we check it, ha it requires a parameter which is the path. So here we can put um I don't know um sounds forward slash my sounds okay and now we're passing that to the folder, I mean to the function, saying that we want to put all the files that are in here in the downloads table. Um, so, of course, we would we don't want to add anything that points to the previous directory because that that's what the point and the double point do. They just go back one directory, and then we want to format and add files to downloads table. Now the precache thing I didn't complete it, but as you can see, if you put materials in here, it's gonna um, precache materials, but you can also precache sounds. So, in this case, I'm not gonna add anything here. I'm just gonna leave this blank. So, it's gonna add those files to download stable. But if I were to type models forward slash um, my models, then I can do true because we do want to pre precache and then here I'm gonna type materials or models since it's the same it doesn't care it doesn't matter because uh, you use the same precache function so this is how you do it I mean it's very simple and it's very useful guys if you don't want to develop a plugin and you want to develop an include file um, to help people then you can you can do it I mean it's it's pretty cool you can even use it for yourself. You can create it and be like, I don't want to share it, okay, just keep it for yourself, use it, and it's going to be useful. Because now you don't have to recode this function every time you create a plugin that it's going to do something similar to this. You can just include this file and it's going to have it in there. And now, if you want the source code for um, this file over here, just PM me and I'll 
put it up online. Um, the only problem is that it won't open other directories that are in the specified directory. So for example, if inside this folder we have another folder, it's going to ignore it, right? Um, but you can easily add that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, guys. Um, mess around with this. Have fun. Also, always take a look at the include files that come with this because they are really, 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 really useful. Um, as you can see here, this is the include files I made for my extension, which is the one I got from a tutorial on sourceman.net. And it does, as you can see, it says native. And if you give me a second, okay, as you can see over here, I have the extensions source code for bin tools, client, counter strike, GeoIP, MySQL, for example. And here, if you open this, you can see all the source code that this thing has. This is um, pure C++, so you might not understand this if you're not familiar with it. Um, but if you are, then you can easily read these, learn from them, and make your own extensions. Um, it's not really hard. It's kind of easy, but you need to know C++ first. So, yeah. Just mess around with this, guys. Um, have fun. And don't forget to tell me if you want me to continue with this series. Um, that I started last week or the other week about my SQLite. Uh, SQLite, I mean, I'm sorry. And also, um, these files, you gotta save them in here, right? I don't know what this popped up. You gotta save them in scripting forward slash include. This is where all your include files go. You can use custom, um, um, folders, but if you do, then you have to add something like my folder slash source mod I believe at least that's how I've always done it and that's the way it works <laughs> so yeah um so thanks for watching guys don't forget to rate the video up if you like it and I'll see you next week